This video covers a variety of different Ngram smoothing techniques, which may improve the performance of your Ngram language models. I'll work through a case example of a classic smoothing technique, Laplace smoothing. I'll also cover add K smoothing, interpolation, back off, and Kinesar Nye smoothing, among others. Ngram frequencies are a simple and popular way to estimate the likelihood of a word or a sequence of words but just using the raw frequencies can result in problems when your test data includes words or contexts that were not seen in the training data. Smoothing is a way to address this problem. By smoothing your engrams, you essentially redistribute some of your probability mass from frequent engrams to infrequent or unseen engrams. There are a lot of different smoothing techniques that you can use, and I'll touch upon many of them in this video. A classic Ingram smoothing technique is Laplace smoothing, which is often also referred to as add one smoothing due to the way it works. You simply add one to all of your Ingram counts before they are normalized into probabilities. Since you're adding one to each Ingram count, that means you also need to add those extra counts to your denominator. Adding one for each Ingram to the denominator is equivalent to adding the size of your vocabulary. The really nice thing about Laplace smoothing is that it means you'll never have a probability of zero for any engrams within your vocabulary. This simple action allows you to avoid a lot of headaches that would otherwise occur from multiplying or attempting to divide by zero. We can work through an example to see how Laplace smoothing works. Let's say we have the toy data set here, where we have unigram and bigram counts for items in our four-word vocabulary. We're only showing some of the possible bigrams within this vocabulary, but we'll just pretend for the sake of simplification that all of them that aren't shown have counts of zero. We can check out our corpus statistics, and we see, for example, that the word is is really frequent, and the word hot never exists. If we just compute our regular ingram probabilities without any smoothing for the unigrams in our corpus, we get the values you see here. The value in refers to the total number of ingram occurrences, not the number of unique vocabulary words. So we have four occurrences of Chicago, plus eight occurrences of is, plus six occurrences of cold, plus zero occurrences of hot, for a total of 18. The probability for the unigram Chicago is then its individual count, four, divided by n, 18, for a result of 0.22. We compute probabilities for the other three unigrams and find respective probabilities of 0 0.44, 0 0.33, and 0 0.00. We can also compute our bigram probabilities the same way. Now, with unigrams, we were considering all possible unigrams in the denominator because a unigram model considers words independent of any history. However, a bigram model considers the most recent word as the history. This means that our value n in the denominator when we compute bigram probabilities is going to be the unigram frequency for the first word in the bigram. For example, the probability for the bigram Chicago is is going to be computed by finding the frequency of that bigram, so that's the value of 2, and dividing it by the frequency with which the unigram Chicago occurs in the corpus, which is 4. And basically, you're answering the question, out of all the times Chicago appears in the corpus, how often would we expect it to be followed by the word is? And that answer, according to our corpus statistics, is 50% or 0.5. Likewise, the probability of seeing is cold, given that the first word is is, is 0.5. And the probability of seeing is hot, given that the first word is is, is 0.00. .00. And now, it's probably not super accurate to assume that the word hot will never follow the word is. So this is exactly the kind of scenario where applying Laplace smoothing can be very helpful. We'll erase the probabilities we just computed and instead compute them with the addition of Laplace smoothing. So now we want to add a count of one to all of our Ingram frequency counts. We do that, and so you can see now that we don't have counts of zero for anything, even for the word hot, but we have a small but non-zero frequency count. Then we go ahead and apply exactly the same formula as before. 
So this time, since we added a value of one to all of our unigram frequency counts, our denominator is actually going to be 22, not 18. Our numerators are also slightly different. So we end up finding that the probability for the unigram Chicago is 0 0.23. The probability for the unigram is is 0 0.41. The probability for the unigram cold is 0 0.32. And the probability for the unigram hot is 0 0.05. We can do the same thing with our bigram probabilities. Again, we add a value equal to the vocabulary size 4 to the denominator. That's because, say we have, for example, the bigram Chicago is, and originally Chicago appeared in the corpus four times, and for two of those times, the word is followed it. And now we're adding a count of 1 to the possibility of each vocabulary word following Chicago. So we have a count of one for Chicago, Chicago, a count of three for Chicago is, a count of one for Chicago cold, and a count of one for Chicago hot. In other words, we've increased the overall count for bigrams beginning with Chicago by the size of the vocabulary for four. We go ahead and divide the updated frequency for Chicago is by the updated frequency for all bigrams beginning with Chicago and we get 3 divided by 8, or 0 0.38. We repeat this for the other bigrams we're interested in, and get probabilities of 0 0.42 for is cold, and 0 0.08 for is hot. Now this process, as we can see, resulted in distinct changes to our probabilities. The bigram probabilities that were large previously ended up decreasing due to smoothing, and the probabilities that were small previously ended up increasing. This is exactly what we'd hoped for. We successfully redistributed some of the probability mass from really frequent ingrams to really infrequent ones. However, it might have even worked a little bit too well. Maybe we didn't want to move the probability for Chicago is all the way from 0 0.5 to 0 0.38. Add K-smoothing is a version of Laplace smoothing that allows you to add fractional counts to your ingram frequencies instead. This gives you more control about the amount of probability mass that you move from frequent to infrequent or unseen events. You can even play around with multiple values of K and select the one that seems to work best on a small held out subset of validation data. The equation for add case smoothing is just a generalization of Laplace smoothing. Well, in Laplace smoothing, k was set to 1. In add case smoothing, you add k, whatever value it is, to the numerator, and then you multiply the vocabulary size by k in the denominator. Even though add case smoothing gives you more control than Laplace smoothing, it's still suboptimal compared to some other smoothing techniques, such as back off and interpolation. Both backoff and interpolation allow you to incorporate multiple ingram sizes when estimating your ingram probabilities. In the case of backoff, you back off to lower order ingrams when you find ingram frequencies of zero at the current value of n. In the case of interpolation, you find a weighted combination of multiple ingram sizes. I'll cover interpolation first. The, the equation for linear interpolation looks kind of complex at first glance, but really it isn't. You just choose weights that sum up to 1, with one weight per ingram size, and apply those weights to your ingram probabilities. For conditional interpolation, you use the same equation, but just parameterize your weights based on context. This just means that we figure out ahead of time using a held out validation set which ingrams are particularly trustworthy, and then we weight those higher. For example, if we know that trigrams based on the expression I followed by a heart emoji are really accurate, then we can go ahead and give them higher weights than something we know is less accurate, like I followed by the taxi emoji. With back off, we always try to use the highest order ingram possible, but if there's a frequency of zero for the ingram we're looking for, we check the next highest order ingram instead. We keep backing off until we reach a size with non-zero frequencies. 
So for example, if we check for the probability of 421 given the bigram i heart, but find a probability of zero, we can check the probability of 421 given heart, and maybe we'll find something there that we can use. And just like with some of the other smoothing techniques we've seen already, when we apply back off, we somehow need to redistribute some of the probability mass, but in this case, we're redistributing it from higher order to lower order in grams. With one form of back off called cat's back off, we redistribute it using a function alpha applied to lower order engrams when needed. When we don't need it, in other words, when we have non-zero frequency counts at the highest order engram, we apply a discount to the probability function so that we have some mass to redistribute later on when the alpha function is called upon. Kinesar Nye smoothing uses discounting just like cat's back off, but it employs absolute discounts. This means that you subtract, subtract the same discount from every count, and then always interpolate lower order engrams. Kinesar Nye smoothing is one of the most commonly used and best performing engram smoothing methods, but it is slightly more complex. So I'll just go over the equation at a high level. If you're interested in reading a longer description of this technique, section 3.5 in the course textbook has a nice explanation of it. Kinesia nice smoothing makes use of absolute discounting based on the underlying premise, so since we're already good at estimating probabilities for frequent engrams, discounting those probabilities by a small amount won't impact them much. But discounting the probabilities associated with less frequent and probably less trustworthy engrams by the same amount will probably impact them quite a bit, and in a good way. However, rather than using only absolute discounting, it also takes things a step further and makes use of the distribution of lower order engrams, since often lower order engrams are only frequent in specific contexts. And basically, the technique ends up creating a model of a word's likelihood to appear as a novel continuation in a new unseen context based on the number of different contexts in which the word has already appeared. When all is said and done, we end up with sort of an overwhelming recursive equation that looks like this for a bigram language model. If we break it down though, it's not really that bad. We just have a normalizing constant that redistributes the probability mass that's been discounted. That normalizing constant is comprised of a normalized discount multiplied by the total number of word types that can follow the first word in the bigram. We also have our regular ingram frequency counts, or for lower order ingrams, the number of unique single word contexts for the ingram. And then we have our lower order ingram probability. So just combining those three components together, we can perform Kinesar Nye smoothing. Now, the previous formula was admittedly a lot, and sometimes you just don't need something that complex. A final alternative that also works fairly well is stupid backoff, which doesn't do any discounting and also doesn't try to make the language model a true probability distribution. Instead, if a higher order engram has a frequency of zero, the technique simply backs off to a lower order engram multiplied by a fixed weight. You can set this weight to whatever you want, but the people who created this technique found that a value of 0.4 works well. That's truly all that there is to this technique. So, in this video, we covered a lot of different smoothing techniques. These techniques will improve the performance of your ingram language models, especially when they encounter previously unseen ingrams. Some of the methods covered are really easy to implement, whereas others are a bit more complex. The smoothing technique that works best for you will depend on the needs of your application.